there he is. I want to tell you a little bit about Simon. Look at him. He looks fabulous. That garden is stunning. So Simon, basically, I'm just going to give your story to everybody. I mean, I'm sure they know who you are, but you kind of burst onto the scene in, scene in 1993 when you were asked to do the flowers for the amazing Richard Curtis film, Four Weddings and a Funeral. That was your kind of like, that was your sort of huge kind of main foray into the world of fame. And then since then, you've just been in high demand. I mean, weddings, magical parties, films, TV commercials, like you, there's nothing you haven't done. And I'm just going to name drop some of your celebrity clients because I feel like I can. Can I do that? Just name drop them. So we've got say, Elton John, we've got Sir Ringo Starr, we've got the Prince of Wales, the Duchess of Cornwall, David and Victoria Beckham. I mean, there's nobody that you haven't done flowers for. We've even worked together in the past, haven't we, darling? Yes, we have. And I'm so excited to join you today, for you to join us to show us how to make a lavish flower crown. Well, have, you seen, have you seen some of the flower crowns? How impressive have, the, have they been? I just love the fact that everybody's taking so much trouble and creating such gorgeous things. And actually, you don't need to be limited by any ability. What I'm going to show you is if you want to create the Rolls Royce of flower crowns. But to be honest, everybody out there is making gorgeous things. So well done, everybody. You are fabulous Garden Day ambassadors, every one of you, because it's been joyous to see what's going on. It um, really has. So how do we start then, Simon, for the uh, real... We need to start off to create something that's going to be the basis on our head. So I like to use flexible branches. This is olive from my garden. And because I've got quite a large head, I'm going to twist it round a few times. And I'm using florist stub wires to secure everything in position. You can use twine, string, wool, any of those things will work. And you can go online, if this is something that you want to do a bit more of at another time, you'll be able to go online and find all sorts of craft supplies and florist supplies to get really busy once you know a few techniques. So we make a long branch that then we bind around our head and then you make a note of where it fits and then you just fold those in on themselves so that you're basically forming a sort of Nero Roman Emperor's chaplet and this would almost do you know I mean it couldn't be simpler than that and that becomes your base and then how you dress it up is really up to you and on the flowers that you've got and if we haven't all got flowers, because not everybody, I have, this is a tiny, tiny London garden that I'm talking to you all from. And I grow everything in pots, but I've also been getting inundated with stuff from mail order. And so I've been making myself a few little flowery moments for those of us that don't have a garden or don't have access. How do you fancy? a bubble wrap bloom fun that's a really good idea well just raid your recycling bin because otherwise these are some leaves that i just cut out and i've just used some florist wire to create these things i made some out of bits of old newspaper i had a book that had fallen apart and there are lots of ways this was something that some avocados had been packed in and i thought actually if we haven't all got a garden, there is no reason why we can't take part in Garden Day and just celebrate the joy of flowers, the joy of spending a bit of time being creative. And so the other tip, and I love this one, and this is just some little squares of tissue paper that something was wrapped in that I was sent. And I've made some little flowers with some wire and I thought that would work as an interim crown during my crown creation, because I can't speak to you naked of head, can I, Lisa? Absolutely not. I mean, it would be rude, quite frankly. 
Um, but how effective are the little tissue paper flowers? They look so pretty. You're so clever though, aren't you? And, and good inspiration with the bubble wrap and because we're all, you know, we've all got recycling at the moment, haven't we? And, you know, little bits and pieces and, you know, it's just about being creative and just sort of thinking outside the box, really. And there's so much stuff around that I think it's really frustrating. We can all make something gorgeous if we've got gorgeous things, but actually... Yeah it's very easy to create something really quite simple. So look around you and see the bits and pieces of plant material that are there and be inspired by them. So now I'm starting to add flowers to my crown and I'm using, this is a, a paper covered wire that comes on a little reel like this, but you can use garden twine or string. And so I'm binding the flowers around and they're onto the outside edge of the ring. And then as I go, I just snip off those stems and then the next one will go on and I bind round. You don't need to pull tight or it will act like a cheese cutter and behead the flower. And tuck in some little sprigs of foliage as you go. And really, you can be as dramatic and elaborate and put in as big a piece as you want. This is lovely lilac, beautiful British lilac that's just oh. in season. And in actual fact, all the flowers I'm using today are British grown. Beautiful. I've got lilac in my garden. I've got some, some of that beautiful purple one and I've also got a white one which is kind of nestled into where the ceanothus is. So those kind of colours together just look so beautiful. And I was loving that little cheeky combination. Yes. Light, vibrant. So Simon, if we were to make a flower crown, how long will it, will it last? How do we keep it as fresh as possible if we're using fresh flowers, freshly cut flowers? Well, if you give your flowers a really good drink beforehand, which we florists call conditioning, so mm -hmm. we keep the flowers we're using a drink for probably, if you can, for 24 hours. If you, once you pick them from the garden, cut them and put them in water. Things like lilac and things like any of your soft foliage like this, which is lovely, lovely gelder rose. This will go a little bit soft and floppy in water. So when you pick it from your garden, cut the stem on an angle and then split up your stem and then plunge that into boiling water just about oh. that much of boiling water in the bottom of a bucket protect the flowers from steam with some newspaper leave it overnight and then the next day it will have really perked up and it really hydrates all the plant material which is what then gives you longevity so that once you've created your design you'll then be able to use some a water sprayer like you use for ironing uh, wrap it in some newspaper and polythene and you can almost make yourself a little like a plastic lunch box that you'd keep a salad in like a large version of that sit it on some damp tissue cover it in a bin liner so that it's totally sealed and put it somewhere cool but not the fridge and how long would that last then? How, 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 how fresh can that keep for how long? If, if we're doing, I mean, this is exactly the technique I would use for creating flowers for weddings and parties and dinners. And generally speaking, it would last, you would make it the day before for the day after, or you'd make it in the morning to be worn that afternoon or evening. So okay. it would last a few hours. Because I want this to last as long as possible. So I'm just trying to get, I'm like, what do I do? How do I keep it fresh? I'll just give it a good old spritz. And just like you say, just keep it in that sort of, I don't know, put the bin liner and do all that just to keep it kind of moist and hydrated. And the joy of a lot of these flower crowns is that actually you can hang them up and they look beautiful as a wreath and they will dry beautifully hung up. So they will, there can be life after garden day. You can get more enjoyment from them. And dried flowers, equally as, as beautiful, and obviously that would last, well, forever pretty much, wouldn't it? Dried flowers are lovely. They can be a bit brittle. So if you just hold them in the steam of a kettle, 
carefully, but just let the flower steam. If you're using, if you're working with children, just supervise them. But it's a way of just slightly rehydrating the brittle flowers, and then that makes them a little bit easier to work with. Great. So that is looking rather beautiful, that flower crown there. It's going to be a very lavish one, isn't it? I mean, we're going for it here. We're definitely going. <laughs> this is it. definitely not subtle. This is like full steam ahead. Lisa, you know me, I don't do subtle. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. So can we go back to the beginning? Like where was your sort of, where did your love of, um, of the garden and flowers and plants come from, Simon? How old were you? I was seven. At the age of seven, I went to a local flower show in Warwick, where I was born and brought up, where my mum and dad still live. And I was just mesmerized by the town flower show. And ever since I was seven, I've always wanted to work with flowers. And I think there's more and more research lately saying how good it is for our mental health, for our well-being to be amongst flower and plant material. And I mean, I've known for all my life since the age of seven that working with flowers is what I want to do. And it's my safe space, certainly during lockdown, being here in my garden has been my total refuge. Yeah, I agree. And I was just saying to, to, to one of the lovely ladies that I was talking to you before that there is scientific proof saying that florists and landscape gardeners and people that work with flowers and plants are some of the happiest in their professions. And it makes absolute sense because it's just that sense of well-being and that hearing the bird song and just, you know, nurturing, having your baby plants, even if you've got like a balcony or you know, um, you know, a window box. It's like having those plants that you nurture, that you take care of, and you just, it's that connection with them that I think is really special. And I think that's why everybody that's on here today is watching because they know that that resonates with them. And that's why Garden Day is so important to us all. And I've been quite busy on my, um, on my Instagram, just trying each day to post so that those people that, as you say, don't have a garden, don't have rolling acres. If you've got a windowsill, if you've got a fire escape or a balcony, even if you just have a front doorstep, you can have a pot of plants, you can grow pea shoots to eat on your windowsill indoors, you can have a hanging basket with a tumbling tomato plant in it. There's loads of ways. We may not all have gardens, but we can definitely all grow. Yeah, and also just having house plants as well. Like that, I love, I mean, as you can see, I've got my house plants in here in this conservatory and I love it. Like it's my haven, you know, I love watering them. I love, it's just, you know, so you don't need to even have, you know, like an outside space, like you said, you know, like your doorstep, your window boxes, but even your living room, surround yourself with, with gorgeous house plants. Um, and where can we buy plants at the moment? Are any supermarkets still selling plants? Some of the supermarkets are selling plants and there are also lots and lots of the UK nurseries are really struggling, the growers now, because this is their busy time. We'd normally all be out in the garden centres being tempted to buy things. And also Chelsea Flower Show and all those shows that are were, would be up and coming means that there's a whole surplus of plants around and at the moment nobody is buying so british nurseries are really really struggling so one or two of the newspapers have had some really good coverage on where you can go to different mail order nurseries that will supply you with plants um, so even if you're totally inside isolating at home and you need to have a little bit of green in your life there are definitely companies out there that can deliver. I think the delivery is a bit of a challenge at the moment. Yeah, so it's a slightly longer delivery time. You don't yes. have to be patient, but they're available. But you can order. And with plants, I think it's always a bit dicey because the transporting of plants in a box through the post is always a bit of a, a risk. So. I appeal to people to just be a little bit more lenient and a little bit kinder with the nurseries because things will take a bit longer to arrive. So when you get your delivery of your plug plants or whatever, get them out of the packaging as soon as you can. Give them a really, really good drink. Let them have some fresh air 
give them a drink um, and then just give them a bit of TLC because I think at the moment is what all of us need is a little bit, bit of a cuddle, bit of a floral hug. <laughs> yes, we do. Absolutely do. So what other flowers have you got there that you're adding? Talk us through because it's just well, looking so yeah. beautiful. It's a riot of all my favorite things. So I, I'm going from marigolds here, which are these lovely bright ones. So you can sow the seeds for these now. So if you're in, if you've got a pot, if you've got a bucket, an old welly boot with a hole in it, put some compost in it and get some seeds. Things like these marigolds, the pot marigolds, these will grow very easily now. There's still time to sow seeds for those. The same with these lovely corn flowers. Oh, they're such a beautiful colour, aren't they? Oh. Vigella, again, Love in a Mist, which will absolutely, that will self-seed all around your garden so you don't know what to do with it. So there are quite a few flowers. Cosmos, people can still be planting seeds for. So there's, there's plenty of lovely, lovely flowers that you can still have growing in your garden. And they don't all need big gardens. I grow everything in my garden in a pot, apart from my salad leaves, which I grow in a little raised bed. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. And are you putting anything fragrant into that crown? Is there, are there any? Yes, that's a nod. That's confirmed, of course. It's going to be, but I mean, like, sorry, more herbs, more herbs and... Lovely sort of... scented geraniums going in oh, that's, here. Okay, Lovely. wonderful fragrant pelagonium now this is so good it's so calming for us so this is a really good thing to grow in a pot you can grow it from a cutting you can make a delicious tea from it which is really calming and good for our immunity and then i've got some sprigs of lovely mint oh gorgeous and you make the tea with the leaves don't you of the, yeah. yes you Yummy. make with the leaves and you can also grow mint and geranium from cuttings with real ease again at this time of the year you don't need any specialist equipment i don't have a greenhouse i just have a windowsill and i have a shed and that is all the space that i have to grow in so now this is a little technique just to add a bit of height to my crown so some of my stems i've mounted onto some florist stub wire and what I'm going to do is I will take some pictures of this and pop it up later on my Insta feed so that, and I can send it so that Garden Day can have it up on theirs too, because it's quite a useful technique. So I've used quite robust florist stub wires. And then I take a, this is a lovely foxglove. These are gorgeous, but if you're doing this with children, just be aware foxgloves are quite toxic. So you need to just supervise them working with those. So I've mounted that onto a wire, basically using a big old hairpin. And then that allows me to insert it in an upright manner. The wires come round and then I just bend them in on themselves. So that gives me just a little bit more height. I wanted a slight element of tiara to my crown. <laughs> it won't surprise you at all. Drama, we want drama, that's what we want, and that's what we're expecting. So, the higher the better, please. <laughs> I want a huge tiara crown. Exactly. And I absolutely do. This is so exciting, I love this. You're making it really quickly. This would take me all day, I think, because you are such a pro. Your nimble fingers working very fast. Well, I've, I've prepped as much as I can. Some of the flower heads that I was using, I had pre-wired. And again, I'll do a little piece on that on Insta so that people can see the details. Um, and I'm creating some things that's a bit fun. It's a, got a bit of height to it, got a bit of drama. And it's really trying to inspire people to not think, oh, I need to have roses and orchids. I need to have lilies and ranunculus. I need whatever Simon's got. You don't, you can just find a whole host of really, whatever lovely things are to hand and just yeah. have some fun. It's about having fun and enjoying and celebrating being amongst gorgeous natural plant material. Here, here, that is what it's all about. 
it is fabulous, Simon, I have to say. Very, very beautiful. Well, and is the sun going to stay where you are, do you think? How are the clouds? What's it looking like? It was a bit windy earlier on, and yesterday it was boiling hot, no wind, and today mm -hmm. we've been lucky. It's much sunnier than they said it would be, so mm -hmm. I'm very happy. And to be honest, I holiday in Scotland, so <laughs> I'm used to... I'm used to whatever the weather is. It doesn't really bother me. And the garden... And you don't, yeah, then you don't need to have sunshine to be in your garden, do you? That's the thing. You really don't. It can come rain or shine. Get out there in your green spaces or go to parks or get to the woods or wherever you can get to. Um, so how will you be celebrating Garden Day? Are you going to have something ice cold from the fridge, perhaps? Or are you putting the kettle on? The kettle is already going to be on and I'm going to have a set of geranium <laughs> tea. Ooh. And I am definitely, definitely, the barbecue is going to be fired up later. And there's a very delicious piece of lamb and some British asparagus going to be on that. Oh, glass of rosé or a white wine? Um, I think a glass of rosé and probably <laughs> some bubbles. Oh, wonderful. We'll what make about sure. You? Oh yeah, I'm going to have a glass of champagne, absolutely. I want to toast Garden Day, so I think I want to encourage everybody to get the bubbles out towards the, um, the, end, of the, the end of today. Um, definitely, like I have a big, huge toast, all of us together, to celebrate this first ever virtual garden party um, that's taking place around the world. I know people are, are tuning in from all over. I want just to, just to tell people to please put your uh, cameras on, don't be shy. Um, because we want to see you. This is what Garden Day is all about. We want to celebrate with you. We want to see you in your spaces, whether it's inside, outside, with your flower crowns on, just whatever you're doing, whether you're having tea, champagne, we want to see you. So put on your, your cameras. And also, I've got amazing prizes to give away, remember. So you can't win a prize unless I see you. So please turn on your cameras. George, come into shot. I'm going to bring my fiance back in. He's quite camera shy, but if he's going to be on camera in his flower crown then everybody can do it there he is hi george <laughs> i'm gonna give you an earpiece so you can hear what's going on no worries. there we go say hi, hello to everyone george. how are you uh, very well yourself i'm marvelous thank you very much is she looking after you i, I, I think she's the way around <laughs> Rubbish, do not believe teamwork. him. Yeah, it's teamwork. Too, it's teamwork, exactly. Simon, show George your amazing flower it's brownies. It's all about teamwork. And Look there at this. Are, guys. So oh. there we are. Just... Oh my goodness. We haven't got a big enough camera to fit you in. <laughs> That's incredible. I mean, I wanted lavish and you haven't disappointed, have you, darling? That is so cool. I love it. So you're going to take loads of pictures today of you like barbecuing with your flower crown on. Definitely. I don't think I'm ever going to take it off, to be honest. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> just, just keep spritzing and just as long as it lasts, keep it on. It looks fantastic. I fan can't wait to see everybody that's going to be creating their own. I want to see all that you're creating. I want to see your floral fabulousness. Please post it onto Garden Day UK with the hashtag and then we will all be able to see what you're sharing you're wearing. Absolutely that's what I said put your cameras on guys if you're watching on Facebook live that's great because I know that you're fans of Garden Day UK but come on over to Zoom get your cameras on you'll all be muted in the chat because otherwise there's lots of you it could be quite noisy but Simon wants to see your crowns I want to see your crowns we want to see where you're celebrating today so um hop on to zoom oh here we go hello Trilene there you are looking fabulous the oh snow is gosh, enough. that pink oh, wall is great as well I think Simon I don't know if you can see that your amazing crown hi there we go looking beautiful hello. Hello. Gorgeous. How are you? You just got the seal of approval, Tara, from Simon. Yeah. Okay. Oh, lovely. Thank you. And here's some Devon cider. Ooh. Good girl. Who else do we have here? We've got Lindsay. There she is. side of it beautiful wasn't it stunning absolutely stunning some brilliant inspiration there 
There's lots of wonderful ladies. Um, oh, hello, Jade. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Jade. We haven't spoken to you yet. Where are you? Where are you in the world? Are you in the UK? No, I'm in Cape Town. Oh, you're in Cape Town. Yes, and wow. we're in a very strict lockdown, so I had to use plastic flowers, but I brought all my, my plants inside, so I'm, I'm kind of enjoying the outside inside. It's beautiful, absolutely. That is the right thing to do. You've made such a beautiful space. That looks lovely to be surrounded by all those plants. And you know what? We're all doing the best we can as far as like having fresh flowers or you know, using the plastic flowers. I think that looks great, Jade. So thank you so much. Nice. Hello. Hi. Hello, Petro. Hi. How are you? Welcome. Hi. Happy Garden Day. You're welcome. Oh, uh, thanks. Same to you. I love my garden. Good. And well, you're lucky enough to have one. Yes, I do. I'm very really lucky. I've got quite a big garden. I live in Coltonville in South Africa. And um, I've got quite a big garden and I love it. And the flower ground is beautiful too, isn't it, Simon? Gorgeous. Thanks very Gorgeous. much. Very beautiful. Hello. Oh, thank you. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. What? I'm trying to find you on here. This is me trying to scroll through. Amanda. Oh, Amanda. Hi. Amanda. <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> How are you I'm doing? Full... Happy Garden Day. Hello. I, I made this in the freezing cold this morning. It is so cold in Northamptonshire, so I've had to come into my really grotty office to have a grotty background. So sorry it's not a garden. <laughs> um, but it's lovely. It's so much fun. I'm going to be here all day. <laughs> good, good, because there's so many great things coming up. You know, there's yeah. some experts in, in all areas of plants and we've got a delicious um a recipe coming up a garden salad and we've got a quiz coming up later so it's a really varied afternoon and have um, a, have, i have posted experts. a picture of my dog me and my doggies in their floral crowns as well i, I made oh. some this morning so i'll try and bring it up quickly on my phone if you if oh you yeah please do seconds. um let me just see if i can get one up for you yeah, I'd love to see that. And have you have you added that on Instagram and on Twitter have, yes. at so, Garden Day UK with the hashtag? It's it's not a big picture. I don't know whether you That's can. Alright. Uh, oh, have a look. Oh, we've missed the picture. Let's go back oh. to Amanda. If we can go back to Amanda quickly to see the photo of the. We'll 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 get to you soon. Oops. Oh gosh, she's gone. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Uh. We are speeding on through with these ladies, all in their amazing flower crowns. Hi. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. Happy flower day, happy garden day. What's, what's your name? I'm looking for you on here. I'm Catherine and my oh. flower crown is made from dried flowers. Ooh. So um, I work for the British Academy of Floral Art, who are up next, and we've been making them with our students. So I made this one from dried hydrangeas last week, which means it lasts and lasts. So it's very pretty, I have to say. You have to be—it's quite delicate, though. You have to be really careful with it, I imagine. Yes, they do. The dried flowers are a bit brittle, so they do tend to fall off. But I've had to come into my workshop because it's too windy in my garden to stay in my garden. It all get blown off. So it would have just blown away. So you know Julie Collins, who's coming up soon. I do. I work for oh, her. Right. So. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, she's going to be doing a demonstration with Liz Earl, and that's going to be teaching us how to make flower crowns for our little ones in our life. Um, so it's very exciting. We're going to be making them for the, for the pets in our world as well. So we've got a whole range of different flower crowns coming up really, really soon.